as a Division II team. That was the last time they beat Cal back in the 70s. So uh, the series is even. One, two, one apiece. Quite a series. <laughs> Here's Coleman rejected underneath. All right, how about the rim protection from the Highlanders to start? Pickett's lob pass corralled by Larson. Low post. Leaked out for Murray. The reset. Martin off the pick. Free throw line jumper short. And goes back to Cal. Well, Riverside has big guys. So what that means, Alex, is they're going to really occupy Cal's big guys inside because if you've got some big guys that can post, those big guys have to stay at home. That's why you're seeing Riverside get a couple of early, easy shots. Darius McNeil, top 20 player out of the state of Texas. Originally committed to Iowa State, wearing one in yellow. Another late signee for Cal over the summer. Shovel pass off the hands of Okoro. He regathers, and Okoro drawing some contact. Hits the deck to shoot a pair. When we come back, a sluggish start for the new look Bears. But they hope that they can get this man, Okoro, with a couple touches. Early start for Brandon Rosser and a 6-0 lead for the Highlanders on the road. You're watching Pac-12 Network, where champions play. Available on Xfinity. I have a structured settlement and I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth. Call to find out how to get a $5,000 cash advance for your structured settlement. That's $5,000 to use any way you like. Call J.G. Wentworth now for your $5,000. Offer is subject to meeting certain underwriting and transaction requirements. Call the number provided or visit 5000now.com for further details. This seriously is like Jurassic Park out here. I'm afraid of heights! From hotels to igloos, over one million accommodations. Book yours. Booking.com. Booking. Yeah! I got a mortgage offer from the bank today. You never just get one offer. Go to LendingTree.com and shop multiple loan offers for free. Free? Yeah, could save thousands. You should probably buy me dinner. <laughs> uh, no. Go to LendingTree.com for a new home loan or refinance. Receive up to five free offers and choose the loan that's right for you. Our average customer could lower their monthly bills by over $300. Go to LendingTree.com right now. We try to focus on each day, gauge your performance by whether it's the best of your ability. We need a great day of preparation. This Pac-12 men's basketball game is brought to you by Maui Jim. The view is better from here. And by Supercuts. Save time, check in online with our mobile app or at supercuts.com. And by Red Robin. Red Robin, yum. Now the Bay Bridge on a relatively damp November evening. All this uh, Pac-12 conference is always tough to play in, and Cal, with their returning production, doesn't have a lot of it coming back. That's the big challenge. A lot of newcomers to integrate in the system. I'm curious, that TV timeout, what do you think Liking Jones is well, talking Well, he's trying to settle about? the team down, say, look, we're going to score some points. Keep going inside. We've got a height advantage. And let's not turn the ball over. Let's not play giveaway basketball. Settle down a little bit because Cal's capable of scoring and playing uh, at a better pace. So I think you're going to see a little bit more deliberate attack. Uh, make, make Riverside defend a little bit better. McNeil off the mark from three. And Cal 0 for 6 from the field to begin the game. Opening night jitters, perhaps? Oh, you play a little bit, Alex. There's no question that when you start out, your first night is always a little bit tougher. It's a challenge. Shots don't, don't go down as well as they do in practice in your exhibition. Then you're playing against a little bit bigger team. But I like the way that I like the way that they're going to the basket. But you know, again, you see Riverside's a big basketball team. Let's talk about the rim protection from Cal, and there is a Coral with his second of the game. But to Riverside's credit, and they're actually going to call a foul on this. Take a look. I don't think so. I think they're giving it to him out of bounds. 
Okay, that is all ball. I thought they perhaps were going to call a foul here. Yeah. Well, it's difficult to get to the rim on Cal, and that's what, <laughs> no matter how poorly they're shooting, they're going to be in the games because of their defense. They're going to make it hard for teams to score at the rim. We touched on it briefly, though. Riverside, their credit, other end of the floor, they've matched them step for step. Another air ball this time from Murray. Quick outlet for Coleman up ahead. Tight quarter Zakoro going up against Minna Dykstra. Lost the handle. Potential two on one for Riverside. Stepping through and finishing is Murray to make it an eight nothing Highlanders start. Well, again, Alex, they've got to do a better job on the offensive end, getting a good shot, getting to the foul line, setting up their press. They, they would like nothing better. I'm sure Joaquin Jones talked about that in his huddle. Let's get to the foul line. Let's get there. And again, you see it's King Theocora getting to the rim. You know, you get that close, you've got to finish or try to draw a foul. Mar Marcus Lee, the intended recipient, the transfer from Kentucky. We'll talk a lot about him. Some excitement on this Cal program for what he can do. Long jumper. Wouldn't go for Coleman. Again, the rebound tracked down by the Highlanders. Dykstra going to work against Lee, and Dykstra puts it in. execution of a jump hook going over the top of a pretty tough defender. So again, use the Riverside showing you their capabilities in their, in their interior. Seven foot even center from the Netherlands. He finished the year strong for Riverside. Had a slow start, but on up in double figures, six out of the final nine games for the Highlanders. And what was a struggle to finish. There's the first two of the game, and it's Coleman off the set play, inbounding for the baseline. That's finished down Coleman. He finds a way to get through the defense. He really attacks. Very aggressive player. Breaks up an 0 for 8 start from the field. <laughs> Murray, blind pass to the baseline. Extra look to the corner. Rosser with the finish. And a little flex after the fact. And that's unusual against his own. Coleman draws contact the other way. You normally don't get through the zone for a dunk. And the baseline, you talk, Dennis Guts talks to his team about diagonal and skip passes. And again, they sealed out. If you watched them in the interior, they sealed out and didn't let Akora get to the, to the drive. So that's really good offensive basketball. Don Coleman at the line for the Bears. Led Cal with 20 points in their exhibition on Monday. Eight of 18 from the field and one of only two letter winners from last year's team. Well, this young man will be at the foul line, I predict, a lot this year. He's such an aggressive player. And that's where Joaquin Jones wants him, is to get to the foul line, set up their press, because good things happen. They will press on a make or a miss. You can see they're going to try to extend a little bit. Maybe not the trap, but they're going to try to extend full court and go back to the zone. Now they're back in a man-to-man. -man. Coach Jones is taking his team off the zone, but lose their opponents on a pass to the rim. So they're going to have to get settled defensively. He talked about the difficulties it was to change defenses this early in the season. Very difficult. First look for Edie Diallo wearing 12 in blue, posting up against a court. Okoro, a little hop step into the restricted area, rolled off the rim. Diallo grabs the rebound. That's a good move, Alex. If they can keep getting that shot, I think you'll live with that. That's a move that will pay dividends for Cal as a game. Diallo, the transfer from Boston College. Talk to him before the game. He's excited to be with this program in Southern California. Big opportunity for him. Murray's three wouldn't go. And McNeil pulls down the board. McNeil has come off the bench for Cal in this game. Coleman driving baseline. Offensive foul. <laughs> Close call. Not sure. I thought he might have been in the restricted area. But definitely was contact. Let's see if he took the charge. Oh, yeah. He was definitely outside the circle. Did he get there in time? That's another question. I don't have to ask that question anymore. I'm over here now. <laughs> so my seat 
in my view, is the same as yours. Are you alluding to any sort of run in Well, you know, when you coach, when you coach uh, Alex, that play always looks different from the bench. It's amazing how much better the officials <laughs> have gotten from this view that I take right now. Quick look from the wing, and Rosser knocks down a three. Well, he's having some fun. I think he let the Cal bench know that he's in the game. And just gave a little wink as he knocked that shot down. Very confident UC Riverside team as, as the game's going on. Rosser has seven. He only averaged six per game. Here's a Coro on the other end with the harm. He'll try to make it a three-point play when we come back. Excellent look. Just an excellent high-low. That's exactly what you want. And a coral finishing inside. Much needed basket for the Golden Bears. Girl, I say we'd run away to be wherever our adventure away. Wherever life takes us, we go together. Interwoven. Exclusively at K, Jared, and Sales. Tonight, it's back-to-back Pac-12 men's basketball. First at six, can Bobby Hurley's Devils send the Aztecs back to Cali in defeat? Then at eight, Eastern Washington and Stanford go head-to-head. -head. Coverage begins tonight at six on Pac-12 Network. Hi, I'm Bella Geis. I'm a goalkeeper with Oregon State Women's Soccer. I'm from Milwaukee, Oregon, and I always grew up playing sports. I loved playing basketball, softball, soccer. I even kicked for my football team in high school, but Soccer was my one true love, and it's the one sport I stuck with. I knew that when I went on my visit here and I talked with Coach Linus that this was the place for me. It just felt like home, and I knew I'd fit in really well here. The fact that Coach Linus cares so much about our academics says to me that he cares about us as people, not just we're not just athletes here. I'd like to go into veterinary medicine with my biology degree. It's been my dream since I was a really little girl that I've always wanted to work with animals and be a vet. I just can't wait for what my future holds. Being a student athlete is about being well-rounded, being a community leader, being a student, and performing on the field. Bella Geist, Oregon State Women's Soccer, go Bees! It happened a fortnight ago. No matter how many games Rowdy bought, Jesse always played more on Game 5. Jesse's here. Game on. Feeling lucky, Rowdy? I reckon. Go to Gamefly.com and play all the new and classic games. Choose from over 9,000 titles with free shipping and no late fees. Start your 30-day free trial at Gamefly.com. Product shown ready to throw Rowdy never had a chance, because Jesse has Gamefly. Eight-point lead for UC Riverside on the road at Cal. Marcus Lee for the Cal Golden Bears is yet to get on the score sheet. They're expecting a lot out of him. Well, you look at those stats, and any time you can shoot 68% from the floor, you want that ball to get in his hands, and so far he's only taken one shot. So, as I mentioned, uh, you can rest assured in the timeout that Joaquin Jones and his staff will talk to his young team and talk about the importance of getting the ball in Marcus Lee and Kingsley Okora's hand. Play through your big guys. Get the ball at the rim. They're allowing the ball to go inside. Really hasn't been any double teaming to speak of. So get the ball and play inside out. See if you can get to the foul line. Get this young man going. He's too talented a player not to help your team. 100 career games played at Kentucky. And as you saw, the best field goal percentage in program history. UC Riverside started this game on a 17-3 run. Had been without a field goal the last 240 until that. Well, they're attacking the dead baseline. That's a tough area, huh. kind of a gray area because it's between the wing and the bottom forward and the guard and the bottom forward. Yeah. So they've got to communicate, get out to that, that shot. So go back to the Highlanders. Again, turnovers plaguing Cal. That's the seventh turnover. Really, a lot of them are unforced. You don't mind at a turnover playing fast pace, but a lot of these have been unforced turnovers. Rosser feeds into the paint. First touch for Riker Pierce, 31 in blue. Martin running point. Folks around this program think Martin might be the best player on this team. Diallo in a tough spot, seven to shoot. Martin feeds to the corner, Pierce a three, bounces in! And they count the basket with a foul underneath after the fact. 
Well, to say, say things are going UC Riverside's way is an understatement. They're getting the bounces of the rims. They're getting a couple of good calls at the end, and, and uh, that's going to be a potential now, again, for a three-point, four-point play. That put Riverside in the bonus. That's why they're at the line. Edie Diallo, we mentioned the transfer from Boston College. So Diallo at the line. to the total 31 15 largest lead of the game for the Highlanders as we mentioned their seven wins might be a little bit deceiving from last year started out the season hot but injuries and suspensions played a large part in how they finished the year Coleman off the head fake drives and stops his jumper wouldn't go and it goes back to Riverside again. Well, Cal's looking for a spark, mm -hmm. Alex, and, you know, they're going to look for it from anywhere they can. Again, I always felt when you're in a drought, get to the foul line, try to set it your press up any way you can. Your shot's not falling. Get to the rim, get to the foul line, and set it up. But again, Riverside's been able to break it. That was nearly another highlight reel finish for Rosser. Rebound underneath Pierce, but he hit it off the side of the rim. A bit better defense underneath that time from Cal. Coleman driving baseline is caught by Diallo. Well, here you see you see Riverside just attacking to the rim. They're really doing a good job of finding guys in the basket. They've done an excellent job of distributing the basketball. Cal's got to get back and you know sometimes they're ball watching, sometimes they're player watching. It's tough when you're in a zone. You've got to be able to watch both and that's tough to do. The zone makes you it really, if you want to be good at it, be able to see both. You've got to really locate ball and guys in your area. There's no man-to-man -man coverage. You have to locate guys coming in and out of your, I mean, your respective areas. Well, the full-court press, when that's used as a weapon to perturb your opponent, is one thing. But the fact that Riverside has been able to slice through it with relative ease has been striking. Well, they have, and you know, it's, uh, they say press is going to be cumulative, Alex, so it's not going to get re uh, re benefits immediately. they just got to stay with it and hopefully get going in the other direction. But the way you see River Size is shooting at the end, uh, you know, you're going to have to read, you know, talk about that. You want to give up those kind of sh shots and transition, maybe shots that normally Riverside wouldn't get. Riverside, three of eight from the field, or from three-point range. Make that four of nine after that last mid. Four and a half minutes to go, first half. And the UC Riverside Highlanders have doubled up the Golden Bears. Murray, senior from Los Angeles, got the pick set from Diallo. They call it a moving screen. Well, I like the strategy of trying to get the big guy to come out of that zone and screening, but you've got to be stationary. It's a new rule this year about how wide your, your feet can be. can't be wider than shoulder width, and you can't move. And right now, David Hall, veteran official, talking to the UC Riverside players just to explain why that call. I like officials that will take the time to do that, especially early in the season. Third foul on Diallo. And he will sit. That's a big foul, by the way. He probably will not see action the rest of this half. Hamilton overlapping with McNeil. Pick set by Lee. Coleman looking for somewhere to go. Lee again on the step back. Well off the mark. That doesn't seem like it's Lee's favorite area. No, he's, you know, he's capable from there, Alex, but really he's better around the paint. He's better in the short corners, stepping off the block. And he was open in the paint, but I think they missed him, so he had to come out a little further. You had to hit post players when they're open and really hit them at the right opportune time so they can make a play. 
pick it. That entry pass knocked away. Very good individual move, uh, defensive play by Marcus Lee. McNeil curls around, the runner wouldn't go. Rebound tracked down by Larson. One and done for Cal. This three-pointer rattles in and out from Pierce. Lob pass, oh that wound up taking the glass. Lee might have been the intended recipient. Fans unhappy that no foul was called. A reverse wouldn't go from Martin. And we're up and down in the final three minutes of this first half. Cal without a field goal the last two minutes plus. And a wrestling match between Lee and Pierce. Pierce hit the deck hard. Well, this is the pace that Cal wants. And if they can play at this pace, you're gonna see really some advantage because Cal's big guys can get up and down. So here's a foul. You'll see it here as you look. Definitely there's some contact. That could have gone either way. Tough call on Marcus Lee. I won this 55-inch TV for less than $30 on DealDash.com. I got this $1,200 computer for $100.71. These aren't actors, they're real people who got real savings at DealDash.com, the fair and honest bidding site. On DealDash, I got this $349 mixer for less than $25. iPads sell for as little as $5, laptops for $10, and professional cameras for as little as $20. I won this iPhone for $8.48 at DealDash.com. I got all this for less than $50 on DealDash.com. Try Deal Dash today. If you don't win, get your money back, but hurry, everything must go. Go to DealDash.com now to start bidding. In my first four months on Deal Dash, I won 104 auctions. And shipping is always free. Visit DealDash.com and start bidding today. Wendy's new chicken tenders are perfectly crispy and tender. And with a new side of sauce and sauce, they're even better. So now the question is... To dip or not to dip? For a limited time, try the new chicken tenders with fries and a drink for just $5. Only at Wendy's. Following last year's historic season, you've got the right alchemy to deliver on the Pac-12's brand of high-octane, up-tempo basketball. Team chemistry turns talent into champions. Pac-12, the conference of champions. Thursday, it's time for back-to-back -back basketball matchups. First at five, David Collette and the Utes will show them how it's done in Salt Lake City. Utah hosts Missouri. Then at seven, can Alonzo Trier and the Cats outplay the Roadrunners in Tucson? Pac-12 men's basketball. Coverage begins Thursday at five on Pac-12 Network. Listen up. The story tonight, we got beat. We never gave up. You guys, I want you to understand this. It don't matter what you did yesterday. It might go through the day. Might be some frustration for the Cal Golden Bears being doubled up by the UC Riverside Highlanders at home. Neither team with a point the last couple minutes. Coming up at half, we'll bring you an update from the State Farm Halftime Report in our Pac-12 Network studio. On the first half highlights, stats, and analysis. They'll take a look at USC dominating in their opener along with Arizona. Both ranked in the top ten. All the highlights from Full Court Friday coming up with Mike Yam and company in the studio. State Farm Halftime Report moments away. Take a look at this hard foul again. Well, well again, in the middle of it. Yeah, it looks as though they're really, when you're boxing out, you're not allowed to root players out. And it really looked as, uh, appears as though Marcus Lee was just maintaining position and he had a second defender come into him and, and root him out, which really should be a, a foul on, on the, uh, on the, really on the uh, defense. So, um, you know, officials early in the season are going to have to get that one under control. It's uh, there's a veteran crew. He's right now David Hall explaining this to uh, Joaquin Jones, but I'm not sure they got that one right. But they get him right most of the time. But that's that's going to be a tough one because it puts Marcus Lee uh, on the bench, and they can really ill afford to have him sitting there. David Hall, leader on this crew, came over, explained it to me because. Lee was the one who initiated and, and kind of pulled Pierce down. Even though they were jostling for position, the foul is called on Lee, and it is Pierce shooting at the other end of the one-on-one. -on -one. Well, I always thought as a coach, you, you call the first contact. You don't, if you, don't, you can, you don't call the second one. Uh, and again, even after a play that's where there's a foul call, if a second person comes in and makes contact, you've got to address that too. I, I think there should be fouls after fouls. I think even after a dead ball, 
uh, you got to be careful. So uh, the officials will sort that out. Everybody's <laughs> this first game jitters for everybody today. Yeah. Uh, but Cal's going to have to find ways to score. There's no doubt that's been their Achilles right now, finding ways to score 20% on their shots. Especially from Coleman, who just missed on the bunny. He is one of ten from the field. Well, I got news for you. He's not going to stop shooting. Yep. And nor does Joaquin Jones want him to stop shooting. But he's going to they're gonna have to find ways to score. And right now they're going to have to also get in there and maybe switch out of the zone, go back to a man, and just see if they can cool UC Riverside off, take their confidence away. Larson has eight for Riverside as they pull down another rebound with Martin. Martin up to seven rebounds. They averages two and a half all of last year. Now in this game shooting sub 20 percent. Doesn't matter what kind of defense you try to play, that's not going to work. Larson now to double figures. Well, as the game goes on, Alex, UC Riverside is going to pick up confidence, especially with the Coro and Marcus Lee sitting on the bench. This is going to be a real tall order for Cal to, to, to try to knock UC Riverside off their very confident perch right here. Well, yeah, at some point, you got to start hitting shots. That's just swing the freshman. McNeil, another newcomer, under 10 to shoot, at a minute 10 to go in the first swing, initiating the contact, the foul was on the floor. Well, that's an aggressive play. Again, if you're not making shots, you get to the foul line the best you can. Don't settle if you're not getting shots and they're, they're really guarding out there. Get to the rim. Try to get some points to the foul line. Set up your press. See what you can do. But you can't just stay stagnant and continue to come down and get one and done. You have to be able to really push yourself and get a better shot. So you're shooting less than 20%, either offensive rebounds, foul shots, anything you can, because the ball's not going to the basket for Cal. And that was a question mark coming in this season for Joaquin Jones. Where will his scoring come from? Obviously, Don uh, is going to be a player that could give them some shots. But when you're one for 10, he's struggling as well. And he'll pick things up. But uh, uh, McCullough is a good shooter. They're going to hope to get some shots in there. And they really want some shots out of McNeil, who's a good-looking freshman out of Texas. Had a chance to watch him coming up as a, as a young player. He's a very talented player, and he can knock down shots. Swing chipping in a couple from the line. About a minute to go in this first half. I don't know if anyone expected this score line, even with the wholesale personnel changes that Cal is experiencing. No, you're right, but give UC Riverside credit. Yes. Let's not just talk about Cal. UC Riverside's playing excellent basketball. They're playing like a veteran team. They're playing with poise, and they're making their shots. They're playing really very well. Very well. Three ball on the way, and Tisevich was off the mark. First touch for Grant Tisevich, freshman from Australia. Timeout for Dennis Cutts. Talk it over in the final 33 seconds of this first half. Well, you're Dennis Cutts. You're talking to him about not <laughs> certainly slowing things down, but they've been playing such good basketball. So, uh, you know, there's not a lot you say. Just keep doing what you're doing, your team, and Joaquin Jones is going to have to get to halftime. Brandon Rosser's put in quite a first-half performance for UC Riverside. Rosser up to 12 points, 5 of 6 from the field. Well, he's in that mid-range shot, and that's a lost shot these days. People like to dunk. People like to hit three-point shots. But he's knocking shots down. He's getting the ball in a very opportune spot. And this all while nursing two fouls in this first half, making now it all the more impressive. Well, they'll regroup. The halftime is going to be a, a, an interesting discussion in both locker rooms. You know, how do you play with the lead if you're UC Riverside? You're on the road playing at a Pac-12 opponent that's not used to losing on this floor. Very seldom have they lost a game. And then you're Joaquin Jones have going, having to go in at halftime and talk to your team about adjustments, relaxing, and, and just playing a really a, a, a more, more relaxed, more confidently. They don't seem to be playing with the kind of confidence that they did in their exhibition, nor have they been playing that way in practice. So they're going to have to regroup. Both teams just warned about getting out of the huddles late. So just something to footnote away. Final 24 seconds. Been a great first half for Dikembe Martin as well. And a career-high seven rebounds. Trying to slice through. Spins, puts up the left, couldn't hit. And the tip wouldn't go from Larson. Now on the run out. Final 10 seconds of the half. Baseline swing. Reverses back out from McCullough. 
Too strong on the three. Rebound tipped alive for Coleman, and that goes in the final seconds of the half. Something at least to build on, perhaps, for Cal. But how about this first half from UC Riverside? 40 first half points and a 19 point lead. Hey, here's Don Coleman doing what he does best, just keeping it alive, finding a way, and they're going to need him to play that kind of basketball for them in the second half. They've dug a big hole, and they're going to have to come back. That's the end of the first half. UC Riverside with a 40 to 21 lead over Cal here in Berkeley. When we return, we'll go to the Pac 12 Network studio for the State Farm halftime report. Stay with us. Yeah, yeah. It's went worth it. Right. I have a structured settlement and I need cash now. Call JG Wentworth. 877 cash now. I have an annuity, but I need cash now. Call JG Wentworth. 877 cash now. Oregon State football. I grew up in Sandy, Oregon, which is about an hour outside of Portland. I started in fourth grade playing football, and uh, I thought I was going to be a basketball player up until about freshman year when I realized I wasn't going to get any taller, so I might as well start, you know, bulking up and get ready for football. My major is going to be communications. Oregon State has a lot to offer for academic support groups, a whole bunch of things that allow us to be able to do well in the classroom. Anything that we need that can help us, you know, excel. Student athlete means to me student first. So even even though I may be playing on the biggest stage in the world and my team may count on me, if I'm not doing well in the classroom, I'm not going to be able to participate. Brian Nall, Oregon State football, go bees. In Utah, you're living on mountain time, and there's nothing standard about that. With 10 resorts less than an hour from Salt Lake International Airport, mountain time means more time on more resorts on the greatest snow on Earth. It means more time with the kids and more time away from the kids. Ski more, shred more, chill more, cheers more. Because mountain time is a state of mind that can only be found in one place, Utah. It's the State Farm Halftime Report from Berkeley, Haas Pavilion. Largely quiet in that first half. UC Riverside has come in and put up 40 in the first half against Cal. With Ben Braun, Alex Faust here with you. It's been interesting to watch this UC Riverside team and their execution in the first half. It starts with Rosser and finishes with Larson. They really dictated for the Highlanders that first half. Well, they played such good basketball. They did what's called diagonal passing, skip passing, and really split Cal. They had three on twos. They came down in transition. You can see they found guys in short corner areas. They worked on the perimeter, but they went baseline to baseline, and then they screened and sealed off, as you saw right here, allowing for a dunk. But you can see, going past the big guys at Cal, very few teams have been able to do that, but Riverside is really doing a great job of finding their bigs at the end of the press. They are attacking against the press, not settling for pulling it back out and resets. Take a look at some of the first half numbers. 47%, that's pretty good, against the Cal team that came out and pressed them. The Bears, though, that 20, that needs to turn around as well as the three-point shooting. Well, you can't take anything away from Riverside and what they've done. They're play, they played almost a perfect half of basketball. California's got to shoot better than 20%. Coach Jones will talk about that. You know, there's not much as a coach you can will your guys to shoot, but you've got to do things that will help your team get to the foul line, get some more baskets. So we'll see what happens this half. A late basket for Don Coleman in the waning seconds of the first half, but otherwise frustration evident for the Cal Bears. Second half when you come back. I won this 55-inch TV for less than $30 on DealDash.com. I got this $1,200 computer for $100.71. These aren't actors. They're real people who got real savings at DealDash.com, the fair and honest bidding site. 
On Deal Dash, I got this $349 mixer for less than $25. iPads sell for as little as $5, laptops for $10, and professional cameras for as little as $20. I won this iPhone for $8.48 at DealDash.com. I got all this for less than $50 on DealDash.com. Try Deal Dash today. If you don't win, get your money back. But hurry, everything must go. Go to DealDash.com now to start bidding. In my first four months on Deal Dash, I won 104 auctions. And shipping is always free. Visit DealDash.com and start bidding today. Saturday. As the regular season winds down, it's time to leave it all on the gridiron. This week, it's a Pac-12 conference doubleheader. First at noon, Manny Wilkins and the Devils have been on point. Can they set flames to the Beaver Dam? Arizona State meets Oregon State in Corvallis. Then at 4, Arizona and Oregon go head-to-head -head in Autzen Stadium. Can Khalil Tate and the Wildcats find the end zone in Eugene? Coverage begins at 11 with the pregame show on Pac-12 Network. Team chemistry. It's not something you're given, but something you earn. Not a feeling that appears overnight, but a bond forged over time in the classroom and on the field, on the court and behind the scenes, on campus and in the community. Practice executed perfectly over and over and over again until victory happens. These are the elements of excellence. Pac-12, the Conference of Champions. A 19-point lead for the UC Riverside Highlanders over the Cal Bears in Berkeley. Alex Faust, Ben Braun here with you. Time now for our Prudential Financial leading scorers in this game. Rosser and Larson, well, really from the get-go, the dynamic duo for Riverside. Don Coleman with a late surge there, though five of those nine points came at the free throw line. That'll be interesting, Alex, to see what adjustments that Cal will make. I don't know if you're a UC Riverside that you make any adjustments because they just played, as I said, a really good half of basketball. I look for Cal to maybe switch up, go back to a man-to-man, -man, see if they can get some individual responsibility on some of these players at Riverside and not get, let them get off the way they get off with some uncontested shots on the other end. Riverside started the game on a 17-3 run. They finished it, finished that first half on a 17-6 run. Well, here's your man-to-man. -man. It didn't take long. They're going back to the old-fashioned, we're going to lace them up and guard you now. They've got to figure out some way to stop this Riverside team. Offensive efficiency was a challenge at times for the Highlanders last year, especially down the stretch. Larson. To build on a terrific first half, rejected by a core, block number three. That's how you start a half, Alex. Is you go down and you get your leading shot blocker to make a shot block and come the other way. What a bobbing and weaving going on in the paint. Foul. There's Larson getting rejected. We mentioned a core is the only returning starter for Cal. Lost 14 pounds over the summer, trying to get leaner and more mobile to fit this new up-tempo style. But when you go back to man-to-man, -to -man, that's what you get. Yeah, I thought he did a good job, as he always does, just keeping on his feet. Okoro will jump hook, wouldn't go. Pogo stick for the rebound, and saved by Riverside. Cal stopped playing. Martin leading the run out. Well, I like that they went inside, Alex, or at least trying to score and try to get to the rim instead of settling for outside shots. Murray reverses out. Dystra a three, short. Darius McNeil the rebound. Riverside out-rebounded Cal by six in that first half. A lot of one and done chances for the Bears. Well, Cal only had six offensive rebounds. When you're missing a lot of shots, you can double up on those. And again, I'm sure that's something Coach Jones talked to his team about at halftime. Hey, when the shots aren't falling, go crash the offensive glass. Hamilton takes a breather. Swing back into the game. Another turnover. Those have been problematic in spurts. Turnover number eight for Cal. 
Martin stops and starts, circles around, shovel pass underneath. Larson rejected again. Martin the runner, no. And Lee got a hand on it to save the rebound. Here come the Bears. Coleman on the step through. Got it. And one. Alex, he is really explosive to the basket. He's got great body control. He used his off hand, absorbed the contact, and finished. This is just a great individual play by Don Coleman. You can see he takes the big guy, he gets into his body, and then at the last second he switches to the left and scores. And then he's doing exactly what his coach wants him to do, get to the rim, set up the, set up the press, hopefully knock your free throw down and try to chip away at this lead. Six points now from the free throw line. The question is going to be, can Cal manufacture enough points this half? Because, you know, you want to set your press up, but it's sure, sure easier to set your press up on a score than this off of missed shots. Well, defensively, they want to limit possessions, but it works both ways, right? Yeah, absolutely. The deficit is 16. Islanders a little bit perturbed with that man-to-man. Murray cutting baseline. Dykstra, top of the key. No. Larson battling for the board. And it goes back to the Highlanders with a fresh 30. Larson one on two in that scenario. Marcus Lee returns. Lee with two personals that first half. What a day for Kimby Martin. Already with a career high seven rebounds. Though has yet to score the ball. Six assists, that'll do just fine. Well, your coach will love that any day. Murray, long jumper, wouldn't go. A Carl on the run out. And he's pickpocketed by Martin. Here come the Highlanders. Martin sprinting into the front court. Left it off, Dykstra. Again, a miss from in close this time. Got it back and laid it up and in. Timeout, UC Riverside. Well, that's a tough play for Cal going the other way, Alex, to turn the ball to turn the ball over. You know, you normally don't pass the ball up to your big guy, and that's why, because they're just not used to making that play. But, but here's the turnaround and the steal, and we're going the other way. NCAA titles to our name, our dominance across all sports is unquestioned. The commitment to our student athletes is unparalleled. These are the elements of excellence. Pac-12, the conference of champions. Every Saturday night, tune to Pac-12 Network for a comprehensive wrap-up of the day's gridiron action on Pac-12 Final Score. Mike Yam and a revolving panel of experts. Best of the best of week eight. Highlight all the big plays, big hits, and big upsets. Over the middle, touchdown! From the biggest college football day of the week. All he does is score touchdowns. Pac-12 final score every Saturday night on Pac-12 Network. Opening nights in college basketball and our first full court Friday on Pac-12 Network. Let's take a look at some of the scores from around the league. You mentioned Arizona. 
blitzing Northern, putting up a hundo on the board. Colorado and Stanford also winners tonight. And USC we also mentioned in the win column as well as we continue to look through the scores. Cal State Fullerton, not much resistance. Washington in a tight one against a good Belmont team. And Oregon State, Tinkoera try to put together a better performance this year. They're rising in the preseason poll, picked to finish eighth in the league this year. It's been a slow build going on for Oregon State. UCLA continuing in the second half against Georgia Tech and China. Well, interesting scores, you know, not, not too many surprises. But I think you're right, Oregon State's probably due for the biggest turnaround in this league uh, compared to a year ago with Trace Trinkle, Trinkle, Trinkle coming back. That's going to be huge for them. And we'll see. I had Oregon last week, and they sure look good as well. I think Oregon and Arizona are so far the top two teams, in my opinion, with USC being right there. Those three teams are looking awfully good early in the season. Well, this Cal team, again, not picked to finish in the upper half of the league, but... They do have some decent components of this team. The question is putting it together. It's been a struggle tonight. Freshman Deshaun Winston leads it up for a car. Time winding down on the shot clock. Coleman has to hurry. Heaves up a long one off the backboard and rim and lands in the hands of Chance Murray. That's good defense by UC Riverside. Very patient defensively and just trying to stay with Cal. Make sure you're not gambling, you're not out overextending yourself, but very solid defense. Edi Diallo returns with those three fouls. Wearing 12 in blue. This is tipped away from Dykstra. Lee getting a hand in the passing lane. Well, the length that Marcus Lee brings to the table is what makes him such an interesting addition working alongside Okoro in the front court. He flirted with the NBA draft, but decided to return to college with a new program, kind of a fresh start. He said he signed with Cal largely for non-basketball reasons. He wanted to be in and around Silicon Valley for his post-college career. Martin, a tough finish. Well, again, he's, they're going by the big guys, and that's, that's a tall order, but they're doing it. And you mentioned Marcus Lee coming back for all the right reasons. He really enjoys his time here at Cal. He's a good, explosive player. I think you're going to see good things happen. Speaking of good things happening, that's another Don Coleman move. I tell you, he uses that left as well as his right. He really does a great job with his offhand. 14 now for Coleman to lead the Bears. The only scorer in double figures for them. Bounce pass picked off, intended for Larson. Here comes Coleman on the break, looking to go up and under. It will not count, but Coleman will head to the lock. Well, there's the pace that Joaquin Jones wants his team to play at. You can see with some block shots and scores. I really like that, but let's watch Don Coleman as he turns the corner, absorbs a little contact, but he uses his left on a shovel, kind of shovel shot. And, you know, that's not, that's an awkward shot for many, but not for Don Coleman. He's really good at body balance. He came on for this team last year, played at the end, and did, I, I thought, a really good job. He's the guy that Joaquin Jones wants he, he, him to have the ball in his hands if there's a shot to be taken or there's a, you know, it's crunch time. And uh, you'll see him as the year goes on scoring more and taking more of a, a, a a, an offensive uh, role for this team. 15 points now for Coleman. And again, the bulk of them, seven from the charity strike. Riverside in a bit of foul trouble to begin the half. That's already five on the Highlanders. Something to keep in mind here. Cal going strictly man-to-man -man now, not zoning, not doing much trapping, just really going man-to-man. Pierce, ill-advised shot, a rejection along the rim, that coming from Lee, and the Golden Bears have it. There's again an example of Marcus Lee running to the rim, and I really like what he does, Alex, he runs not to the block, so many post guys run to the block, he runs right to the rim, and he positions himself dead at the rim. And, and it's very tough for defenders because you're not going to get in front of him. He'll get you over the top and, and he'll lob and he'll dunk you. But he gets to the rim and he posts up and he draws the foul. That's If his teammates look for him, they're going to find Marcus Lee. Uh, nobody's going to get down the court any faster than Marcus Lee, I can tell you that. By the way, away from the ball, that is Alex Larson's third foul. We're married, and as professional golfers, we're very competitive. But only on the golf course. 72 seconds. How long can you hold your breath? No competing at home. Booyah. That's our rule. Pure Silk and Barbasol. Proud supporters of professional golf and friendly competition everywhere. Loser takes out the trash. 
Try new Pure Silk and Barbasol razors. Available now nationwide. I'm Casey Hughes, University of Utah football. I play defensive back. I was originally born in California. I got into football and my goddad seen that I was fast, so he decided to take me to the park and sign me up for football. Being a student athlete is me being a student first and an athlete second. Academics always come first in this program. They promise you that you're going to get a major, and that's, that's the right thing to do. For the most part, I'm, I'm not really depending on the NFL right now. My first choice is my academics, and I hope my major get me real far in life. The person that inspired me the most is my dad. He always there for me. He sacrificed everything he got to do for me, and I just want to give it all back to him. Casey Hughes, University of Utah, defensive back, go Utes. Friday, it's a Pac-12 men's doubleheader. First at 6, Aaron Holiday and UCLA take on South Carolina State. Then at 8, Dana Altman's Ducks are ready to swap the Hornets in Eugene. Coverage begins at 6 on Pac-12 Network. There's nothing more important to me than my vacation. So when I need to book a hotel, I want someone who makes it easy. Booking.com gets it. And with their price match, I know I'm getting the best price every time. Visit Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. And that could, might be a big uh, footnote here in this game. And considering 13.58 to go, Larson, one of the two leading scorers for UC Riverside. Well, the fouls are starting to add up. You yeah. can see that... Coach Cutts is concerned, you know, they're they're uh, relaxing just a little bit with that lead, maybe playing a little bit more lax than they were in the first half, and that's what human nature does, Alex. I've been there, done that, and you got to just stay on your players because you don't want to relax with the lead, especially on, you're on the road playing in a tough environment. you got to make sure you don't give your opponents anything. Now, back-to-back -back fouls have put Cal at the line. They're in the bonus the rest of the way. Well, that's awfully early to be in the bonus, so... Again, if Cal can capitalize by getting to the foul line, keep going inside and setting up that pressure, and just one possession at a time, this game's not out of reach. Just a swing, the freshman from Honolulu, Hawaii, at the line. Played at modern day, and obviously uh, played for a great coach and great program, so he's no stranger to success. Used to winning a lot of basketball games at modern day. Modern day in the L.A. area. Swing immediately picks up a foul after splitting the pair at the line. Well, Joaquin Jones just looking for any type of edge his team can get. A turnover, maybe a quick, uh, quick steal. Darius McNeil back in the game, hounding to Kimby Martin. See, I like that. I, I, I really like that because when you exchange, Alex, you cannot use your body as a shield. And Cal's defense now is getting more aggressive, and that's what happened. That's a good call by David Hall. I never liked it when I was coaching, but I can see, I tell you now, that's a good call, and that's exactly what uh, defensively Cal's trying to do, is speed up this UC Riverside team. Coleman sprinting to the rack on the baseline, and the deficit is down to 13. Well, UC Riverside should be calling the timeout pretty shortly. If they cut this to single digits, look for UC Riverside to call a timeout and see if they can stem the tie. Cal doing a good job getting back in the game. Wow, wild finish for Chance Murray, and one. That's a huge basket. Mm. Going, to, going to the rim, absorbing contact, and knocking a shot down just when his team needed him the most. Here's Chance Murray crossing over, getting by two defenders, and picking up the foul, I believe, on a coral. They tagged it to swing, his second. Well, that's fortunate, because Okoro looked like he had the bulk of the contact. Seven points now for the redshirt senior. Well, interesting move. You're seeing a zone defense, which is in their repertoire by UC Riverside. Coleman spot a three, got it! Well, that's not their preferred choice, but you can see Don Coleman said thank you very much and just confidently shot the ball from three. So I don't know how long they'll stay in the zone, but they're doing it because, as you mentioned, they're in a bit of foul trouble now. Coleman up to 20 points now. Out of the Cal 34. 
Long jumper Murray wouldn't go. Here comes Coleman. Numbers for Cal. Don Coleman all the way. Couldn't finish it with the left hand. Well, he's mad at himself. He wanted that to fall, and he really disappointed himself. Well, that's, that's one he knows he should finish. Ooh, baseline, Rosser initiating the contact. Why is he playing aggressively this game? Yeah. Nice screen by, a little bit of a slip screen by Okoro to set that up, but the defender hesitated and Don Coleman did not hesitate. So he's going to step it up for the Cal Beers. The question is, can some other players on this team step up with Don Coleman and provide the punch so desperately needed by Joaquin Jones and his coaching staff? They need somebody else to step up besides Don Coleman. Rosser last year, a 62% free throw shooter as a Coro comes out. You're watching Pac-12 Network, where champions play. Available on Xfinity. by Dollar Shave Club. It's going to change your life. Well, the shave part of your life. Try shave butter and a razor at dollarshaveclub.com. Hiring was always a huge challenge. Endless hours on job sites with not a lot to show for. Then I found ZipRecruiter. They figured out hiring. I post my job and they send me the right people because their technology is smart. Go to ZipRecruiter to post over 100 job boards with one click. Then easily select the best candidates from your dashboard. ZipRecruiter often sends me the right person in 24 hours. The smartest way to hire. ZipRecruiter, official hiring partner of the Pac-12 Conference. Try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Pac-12. It is the best analysis in the business. For me, it's a blast to watch. You have to understand what you're doing. You kind of got to get punched in the gut sometimes. Sharpening that sword. Protections, line of scrimmage. I feel like we're pretty good about them back. Can they really get it done defensively? Well, oh, gee, I don't know. You look refreshed. What was the main reason there for doing it now? The what now? Two rushing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns. Yeah, that's been mentioned. Oh, baloney. It is certainly a mess. Uh, we already know that. Right. Right. Sorry about that. You could use that for a promo. <laughs> Wednesday, it's back-to-back -back hoops on Pac-12 Network. First at 6, Robert Franks and the Cougs defend Beasley Coliseum against the Red Hawks. Then at 8, UCLA and Central Arkansas meet in Los Angeles. Coverage begins at 6 on Pac-12 Network. You know, UC Riverside not afraid to go to their bench either, Alex, and that's been a plus. You know, I think so many times in basketball you look at the frontline players, but it's your bench that can really sustain things, keep things together, give you a blow. But UC Riverside's been able to play guys off the bench, and they're doing a fine job for their squad. Under 12 and a half minutes to go, McNeil launches and connects. Uh, he can knock the shot down. He's a really prolific scorer from Houston, Texas, something I know a little bit about, and they needed that basket. So I, just when we were asking, you were asking, is there somebody else can answer the call? Looks like McNeil can. And the steal forced by Swing. Are they going to call him for a foul? And more after that initial whistle. Coleman has to be careful. Maybe a little tug. Well, they're going to go back and review this. There's no question yep. that there was some contact right here in front of us by the sideline. And if they can prove that they pulled the jersey, that should be an intentional foul. Mm -hmm. And the ball. And then there was a little bit of extracurricular coming back. And I think there may be a second foul, maybe unsportsmanlike or flagrant foul called in addition. So just when I was calling for officials, maybe to have two fouls in the same possession. You're going to see it here. I believe the officials will come up with two separate calls. Alex, they're going to review it now. Go to the monitors. I like that they can do that yes. and get it right. It's so important in the game. Don't guess. You've got three officials. It takes time. I know the fans don't like it, but get it right. Well, the uh, student section behind us well, they're expressing always right. their displeasure. They're always <laughs> the initial one. But you're, but you're right. That's a relatively new rule. The last couple of years where officials can go to the table and determine whether or not it should be a flagrant. This is what they're looking at as well. well with Coleman afterwards. Watch 14. This is a flop. 
Well, they're going to look at that one and see if that's a flagrant or that's just an, is that an impeding of progress? Is that a little yeah. extracurricular? There will be some call there. It's a question of, you know, what? There wasn't a, a thrown elbow or an arm, but there was certainly a little bit of a body block. So Don't forget the whistle had already come on the jersey tug from behind Justice Swing. Now, they're going to look at it. If that was directed at somebody's head or right. body, that could be flagrant, maybe an ejection. I don't think it was that personal, that flagrant, right. but there's going to be a contact and an additional foul. So, again, that's unfortunate because just when you thought Cal was getting a little momentum with that play, two shots in the ball, now it might get wiped out or you might see it neutralized. So let's see what the officials come up. They're huddling at, at center court, and they'll come over here and give us our call shortly. Well, don't forget, when you're talking about a flagrant foul, you're talking about egregious violence, any, anything along those lines. Well, as I mentioned, it was certainly an unsportsmanlike play, whether they, they step it up to there's a flagrant one, there's a flagrant mm -hmm. two, so you're, there's levels of flagrant fouls, and it was certainly a non-basketball play after the whistle, so they're going to come up with something here. The question is, what will it be? And, you know, no sense in speculating. We're going to get the answer shortly. Both officials are talking to the coaches. I know they're explaining the jersey grab. That was obvious. And here's, here's the officials now coming over. Okay, and we, we just got the ruling. Obviously, uh, uh, first call is going to be a flagrant. And, and that's going to be a, a, for grabbing the jersey. And the second one, it looked as though it was going to be, as we mentioned, just a uh, contact foul. No, could have been worse. Yeah, it could have been worse. No, no ejection, no flagrant, but a definite contact. And it was. It was a contact foul. Uh, really unnecessary, but, you know, there's a, in the heat of the moment that happens. And now we'll see. Uh, we'll sort it out with free throws. And uh, I think both teams are looking to their respective coaches just to see exactly what, what they should be doing from a technical standpoint. This you know, is definitely slowing down. Clear path foul first, and this is where the free throws come from on swing. And as we mentioned, it'll be a contact, dead ball foul, the second foul from Don Coleman. And the, the officials will go the other way. We'll shoot free throws at the other end. So again, if uh, Riverside can knock down their free throws, that will negate that slight advantage, Alex. Riker, Pierce, the one to take. 75% free throw shooter. second. The gap is 10. Well, after all that, the well, Riverside Riverside hasn't been to the foul line much, so they're going to take advantage of that or try to take advantage of it, but Cal's certainly making an effort to get to the foul line. We'll see how the defense works from there. Cal's really picked up their defensive effort. Anytime two players come together on the offensive end, they will trap. That's part of their repertoire. Diallo's entry pass found Larson in a perfect spot for the easy deuce. What a great seal off, a great delivery and seal off for the inside on the inside presence. McBeal picking up his first points a couple moments ago. Coleman wild shot off the side of the backboard. Come the Highlanders on the run out. Martin having to corral his dribble. And he waits for support to arrive. Murray behind the back. Feeds the wing. Larson short corner. No. And the rebound off the heel. The rim right out to Murray. He couldn't hit. Diallo a third try. Well, the freshman's uh, got to get in there. Matisovic and really just use his body. 6'8". And keep steal off because he gave up the offensive rebound. The last thing you want in the situation, you're playing good first shot defense, but you can't give up seconds. Lee looking to turn the corner on Diallo, and that is the fourth 
for Edie Diallo, which will send Marcus Lee to the line. How about this play? Second and third opportunities, and the Riverside bench is loving it. Nice call, Dr. Pepper, last one. Hey, that's my Dr. Pepper. I saw it first. No, you didn't. Let go. You let go. Nice. You. You. Oh, Claire, who oh do I do? yeah, old-fashioned Kravoff. Hey. Generations of bad blood. Rivalries. No taggers. Don't make any sudden movements. Hey. I got just the thing. Hey. Easy. Easy. Uh, we're lucky. Easily doesn't work. Let's go, Dr. Pepper here. Let's go. Hi, I'm Adora Anai, University of Utah Women's Volleyball. I'm from Paula, Hawaii. I chose the University of Utah because I have family around and second most because they have a great nursing program here. I really wanted to get into the medical field, so I looked more into it, researched, and I found that it was one of the top in the nation. Student athlete means more of being a student first before you're a uh, respected sport. Obtaining an education here at the University of Utah is number one to me. I come to school, I do a sport. The main focus here at college is being able to get a degree and earn an education for your future. Adora and I, University of Utah Women's Volleyball. Go Utes! Champions are created with team chemistry. Through the right side, there he goes! That imperfect mixture of unique talent, determination, and risk-taking. It's an experiment worth doing. Combining advanced moves in the lab and in the stadium. Excellence, innovation, and going for it every time. We call it Pac-12 Team Chemistry, and it makes us who we are. The lead is 14 for the UC Riverside Highlanders in Berkeley. Time now for our Maui gym. The view is better from here. We're looking underneath at some of the rim protection from Riverside. But the looks have been great on the offensive end as well for the Highlanders. Well, they're doing a great job just maintaining, but you know, Cal stepped their defense up now, so the pressure's gonna be back. I think a little bit on Riverside to maintain. They've only shot 25% in the second half. Cal's up their game to 45%, so sometimes basketball's a simple game. When you turn around the, the shooting percentages, now you see Cal pulling back in this game, and also Cal has not turned the ball over this half, which has been huge, and, and whereas they turned it over big time in the first half and really cost their team. Yeah, 10 turnovers in the first, just three this half. Marcus Lee, zero points, three rebounds, three fouls. A stark contrast to the exhibition on Monday that Cal played, where he finished with a double-double, 17 points, 12 rebounds, including five of the offensive variety. Today has been a struggle. But he's been looking forward to getting back on a basketball court in a regulation game. Said the other day, 522 days, but who's counting? Well, he's counting, believe me, player. <laughs> and yes. so are the coaching, so is the coaching staff. But Marcus Lee's a terrific young man. Look for him to really have a, a, a solid season. But the first game's the toughest. There's no doubt that you're playing in your very first game back. It's going to be a struggle. Pick it. Fees to the wing. Martin knocks down a three. How about the day for Dikembe Martin? Well, he was a 40% three-point shooter last year. These are no accidents. Uh, Alex, he can shoot the ball from three. Cal's got to get out to him especially and, and, and make sure they load up on him. Less the shooting, more to go along with the rebounding. Underneath the swing, backdoor Coleman was waiting at that pass. Got fumbled. Well, I like Marcus Lee's ability to find his teammates. He's really adept at finding guys. He's an agile player. And now we've got a backcourt violation, a double dribble or discontinuation of the dribble. It's an interesting call. Uh, I'll just say that. But that last thing that UC Riverside wants to do is turn it over and put the ball back in Cal's hands because Cal's been taking advantage of these opportunities. And yet that deficit has yet to come within single digits. Well, that's kind of a magic number, isn't it? Right. Look for things to happen if they can just get it down to 10 or less. A tussling going on underneath between Larson and a Coral. 
A lot of real That would be Larson's fourth. That's right, and a lot of calls now going against UC Riverside. The big big guys are getting called, and that's going to be a huge, huge factor going down the stretch of this game because Cal certainly has a decided height advantage inside if the big guys from UC Riverside are sitting on that bench. Ten rebounds for our core tonight, but just three points. Well, he's got to still continue to, you know, that's what's played. Kingsley has been, uh, you know, this is the free throw line. He's been a, about a 50% free throw shooter. He's got to step that up because he's going to get fouled this year. If he can knock down those shots, that sure helps their cause because the press is set up. But when you're missing, it's really hard to get in that pressure situation. Well, without Jabari Bird and Ivan Rabb, he's going to be asked to pick up some of the scoring. We knew that he would have to pick up some of the rebounding left, especially in Rabb's wake. We forget sometimes that they lost two pros mm. and a bunch of transfers that really...